Welcome to Unplugged Performance. Today we're going to be installing our new luxury suspension kit, which is a combination of our new adjustable struts as well as our dual rate linear lowering springs. Here we have the new Unplugged Performance luxury suspension kit. We actually specifically designed this box to ensure that all parts are safe during transport and nothing gets damaged. It's also a very, very easy box to open here. Um, first, I'm just going to pull out these sliders. And pull out two shocks at once, just like so. And then you'll see there's actually a pull tab on this side. Just pull that out, you have access to your shocks. All right, once you have the box open, you essentially pull on the back side and then slide the struts right out. Up here. This is our front shock here. Uh, it actually comes with adjustable damping here at the top. Uh, if you go counterclockwise, you are going softer. If you go clockwise, you're essentially stiffening up the suspension. Um, this is fully adjustable. It does come preset with what we recommend for day-to-day -day use. However, if you do want either a softer ride or a firmer ride, you have that adjustability up top. Here. So to complete our luxury suspension kit, it utilizes both our adjustable shocks as well as our dual rate linear lowering springs. Now, the first lower spring rate is intended for your daily driving. It's gonna be improving your ride quality over speed bumps, railroads, potholes, things of that nature to ensure that you have a more comfortable ride over the stock suspension. Anytime that you wanna have a more enthusiast uh, drive, essentially the higher spring rate will engage and allow you to do so, so you have the best of both worlds. To kick off the installation of our new luxury suspension kit, what we're first going to do is start on the front of the vehicle. Step one is going to be opening the trunk here and removing this top cowl. To do so, you're going to pull up on the push clips. And continue to remove accordingly. All right, and next we're going to need to remove the wiper fluid reservoir intake by pull using a push clip removal tool as well as we're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket on either end, as well as remove these two bolts to ensure that we have clearance to pull out the filter assembly. All right, now we have access to this top of our strut mount. In order to remove the strut from the uh, vehicle, you're gonna need to remove four different bolts. You have two 13 mils here and two 15 mils here. In order to gain access to this, we need to remove the air intake duct utilizing a 10 millimeter. And now we're ready to lift the vehicle and remove the wheels so we have access to the suspension assembly. All right, now that you have the front wheel removed from the vehicle, next you're gonna to wanna to remove the wheel speed sensor tabs. You're gonna have four push clips that you will use needle nose pliers to remove, as well as the brake line bracket utilizing a 10 millimeter bolt. Now that you have those two removed, next you're gonna move on to removing the end link, which is utilizing an 18 millimeter bolt, as well as the pin for the upright, which is utilizing a 15 millimeter bolt. All right, now that you've disconnected the upright from the front upper control arm, as well as disconnected the end link. We're gonna go ahead and loosen the 21 millimeter bolt on the bottom side of the control arm. 
that connects the strut to the lower controller. All right, now that we've loosened the lower 21, we're ready to go ahead and remove the strut from the vehicle. In order to do so, we actually need to make our way to the top here to remove the two 13 millimeter bolts and the two 15 millimeter bolts on the top of the strut tower. All right, now that we removed the four bolts on top, we're gonna make our way to the bottom and remove the bolt that is retaining the strut to the lower control arm so that we can remove the shock from the vehicle. Now that we've removed the front strut assembly from the vehicle, you can see we have the strut assembly itself as well as the cradle and the front of the control arm. What we're looking to do here is essentially remove using these top 13 mil uh, nuts here. We're gonna remove this cradle and top hat assembly and move this over to our new luxury suspension strut here. All right, and now we need to go ahead and remove this top hat. In order to do so, you're gonna be removing this uh, 17 millimeter nut that is currently retaining the top hat onto the coilover. In doing so, you need to make sure that the top hat and spring is retained from expanding so that you don't have any accidents. Now that you have the top hat removed, you can go ahead and transfer all of the hardware from the OEM strut over to the new strut. So this is essentially going to be utilizing the OEM top hat, the top spring rubber isolator, the OEM dust boot, as well as the bump stop. We're going to go ahead and assemble this now. And we also need to remove the lower spring isolator from the OEM strut. There's three pull tabs you need to be careful with here. Essentially stretch this over the top side. All right, now that we have these off, we're gonna go ahead and get these cleaned up so we can go ahead and install them on the new strut. All right, now that we've cleaned all of our subcomponents, we're ready to transfer them over to the new shock. First, we're gonna start with the lower spring isolator. Make sure it pins down. And it's gonna follow the same orientation that it did on the OEM shock. Make sure the pins fall into their slot like so. All right, next, you're gonna go ahead and take your lowering spring and place this onto the shock like so, making sure the pigtail falls into the lower slot. Next, you're gonna install the OEM bump stop on the strut like so, as well as the dust boot. All right, next step is to take this over to the spring compressor so we can remove tension on the spring to allow for our top hat to rest on the assembly like so. Now you wanna make sure that you do remove pressure from the spring when you're installing the top hat because if you do not, the amount of pressure required to uh, compress the spring as you're installing the top hat is too much pressure for these threads and you will likely damage these threads. All right, now that we have our strut assembly mounted in the spring compressor, we're gonna go ahead and compress the spring so that we can hand thread the top hat onto the strut using our new 14 millimeter nut. Now it's really important that this is hand threaded and you don't use an impact in this process because you wanna mitigate any risk of damaging the threads as well as the piston. If you are mounting this into the assembly, you wanna make sure that the mounting point on the fork essentially runs in line with, the, with this pin. If the studs are almost in a Y formation, but as long as you have it pointing in this direction, this will make it a lot easier to mount onto the vehicle.
All right, now that we have our top hat installed, let's go ahead and discuss this strut. This strut offers adjustable damping. Uh, it is set out of the box to optimize comfort so no changes are needed. You can fine tune this assembly, however we recommend the default set. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the cradle on top of the top hat. Go ahead and install the shock. In the opposite order, the opposite order it was removed. We're going to start by feeding the 21 millimeter bolt through the lower control arm to secure the shock to the arm. And now we'll move up to the 13 and 15 millimeter bolts to secure the top cradle to the chassis of the vehicle. Be sure to secure these bolts by hand to ensure you don't strip the crane. Go ahead and reinstall the duct for the cabin air filter. To do so, you're going to essentially align the two studs on the firewall with the two slots here, as well as this lower pin with this whole slot here. Now that we have our ducting in place, we can go ahead and install our 10 millimeter retainer bolt. Like so. Always remember to thread it by hand before using any tools. And for this you just need to go hand tight. Alright, and next step is going to be to reinstall the cabin air filter assembly. To do so, you essentially want to use the guides to ensure that the placement is correct here. No, you don't. Now that the assembly is in place, you're going to reinstall the retainer bolts here. These are the longer studs. Thread these by hand as well, or we use any tool. Same goes for the other side. And then don't forget the one push clip you use to retain your washer fluid fill reservoir. And then don't forget the 10 millimeter bolts that go into the front to actually retain the front to the chassis of the vehicle. And the 
final step is going to be to reinstall the top cowl. Again, these are just push clips, so you're going to be reinstalling these by hand. Make sure you get everything aligned. And you can snap it into place. All right, now that we've finished up the front end of the vehicle, we can go ahead and move on to the rear. Now to start, we're gonna go ahead and move the 10 millimeter bolt off of this spring arm tray here. And once you've removed this cover, you will then have access to removing these 21 millimeter bolts. Before you do so, you wanna make sure that you apply a jack underneath where the spring is located on the spring arm to ensure that there is pressure when you're removing these bolts. So that Now that we've taken the pressure off of the lower spring arm, we're ready to go ahead and remove the shock. In, in order to do so, you need to utilize an extension as well as a 15 millimeter socket to remove the two 15 millimeter bolts that are going to be retaining the shock. Now that you have the strut removed, the next step is going to be removing the spring from the lower control arm. Alright, now that we have the OEM rear strut out of the vehicle, we're going to transfer everything over to the new strut. This includes removing the boot, the top hat, the dust boot, as well as the bump stop underneath. Make sure that you're using hand tools when you're tightening these top nuts. Otherwise, if you use an impact, you will likely damage these threads. All right, now we have the top hat on, we can go ahead and put our moisture shield back onto the top of the strut, and we're ready to throw it back into the vehicle. All right, now that the old spring is out, we can go ahead and transfer the rubber isolators onto the new spring and install it into the vehicle. One thing to keep in mind when you're installing the rear spring is that there is a proper orientation. You want to ensure that the rubber isolator pin follows, follows the OEM slot placement as well as the pigtail of the spring is facing outward of the vehicle. All right, now that we have our strut installed and our spring installed, we're ready to go ahead and reinstall the lower spring arm to the hub and the shock itself. This is gonna be utilizing the two 21 millimeter bolts. We should be good to go. Now 
This includes the installation of our luxury suspension kit for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. And if you want more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're looking to improve the overall performance, comfort, or capability of your Tesla, be sure to check us out at unpluggedperformance.com.